thanks for choosing this session. I know there's a lot of really cool sessions, so I'm glad that you're here and learning out with me about the Facebook algorithm. Um, so, who is familiar with Facebook pages? Just a show of hands if you have one. Cool. And within the past couple of months, have you noticed a decrease in your reach? And the few that's happened to you. Yeah, um, I, I manage a lot of uh, social media pages for my clients, and for every single one of them, it's been a really steady decline, and um, it's been really harsh with them, especially this past month. I don't know what's up, but um, I really had to look more into using ads to get the same reach I did as last year. So, um, yeah, I put together this little presentation about Facebook algorithm, uh, the changes that Mark Zuckerberg had announced as of January, and uh, some optimization tips that I found were really helpful for me. Um, again, you guys can try it out on your own, but um, it is more of a trial and error I find with optimizing for your Facebook, but these are the tips that I wanted to share with you. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to answer at any, or ask them at any time. Um, we don't have to wait till the end. But, uh, Hopefully this can be a very engaging um, presentation. I want to hear your feedback as well. So, get started. Okay, so that's me. Um, I am a social media manager and I also teach at Humber College. I've also taught at U of T. And I'm really passionate about um, social media strategy and advertising and everything that it takes for a brand's message to get out to the audience. Um, I started a company and I wanted to focus on small businesses as well as artists and uh, creative people to help them um, properly align themselves online. Okay, so you had a Facebook page last year. You had a, a very specific way of doing your posts and it was really great. And then 2018 rolled around and something happened with Facebook and now your clients are really angry with you because your reach has declined. This is what happens to me and a lot of people that I've you know, found basic. So let's start off with the very basics. What is an algorithm? Any, any guesses? Yes? A uh, series of steps that mathematically decide what things get ahead and what things get behind on a list? Yeah, absolutely. It's a formula at the, end, at the end of the day. So Facebook has put in um, a formula to help determine what gets post it on the news feed and what does it? Um, who sees what content and who sees different content? If you think about just on your personal pages, the content that comes up for me is a lot of weddings and babies and a lot of life events. Um, even from people that I haven't talked to in a while, but because that is considered a life event, Facebook has put it into an algorithm to show it to more people than maybe a post of them eating Cheerios in the morning. Right? So, um, depending on who you talk to on a regular basis, who you search up on a regular basis, those are the types of content that will, that will appear to you on the news feed. Um, so, Mark Zuckerberg did this public announcement on his Facebook page about the new Facebook algorithm that's going to be taking place. Um, you can look it up for the full post, it's a really long one, but I've highlighted um, some key pieces here. So one is we've gotten feedback from our community that the public content posts from businesses, brands, and media is crowding out the personal moments that lead us to connect more with each other. So this is really going to affect um, a lot of brands and uh, business pages for sure. And so he's changing the goal. Um, the, they want to put in relevant content, helping you have more meaningful social interactions. So meaningful social interactions, when you hear that term, what does that mean to you? People I actually know. Yeah, people you know. Any other guesses? <coughs> yeah. People who actually care what you're, what you're talking about. Yeah, so there's some sort of reciprocity there. Maybe it's uh, people who comment on your posts or ones that you comment on their posts. So there is that, that friendship, whether you actually are friends in your life or not. Right. Any other guesses? Yeah? Uh, it's a more in-depth rather than the shallow conversation. Yeah, in-depth. Um, yeah, more personal interaction, something that's more, more, more meaningful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Last advertising. Sorry? Last advertising. Oh uh, yeah, less advertising for sure, yeah. <laughs> um, also for me, I think it's, does anyone have that um, 
that friend that always promotes themselves on social media and that's all yeah. that, that yeah. everything yeah. that they do. Yeah, I mean, I've been there and I know it's hard, especially if you want to get the message out and let people know, but I think um, this is a big part of Facebook's algorithm is they want to try and diversify content. So yes, you can occasionally promote yourself and do a plug for the business that you're in or the show that you're in, but um, at the end of the day, I think Facebook is really looking for that diversity in what kind of content that you post. And this is beyond um, the context of the post, so whether it's promotional or not. Um, it's also, do you post videos? Do you post images? I find for me, if I'm on this, um, this stretch of posting just images, the next time I post a video, I get a lot more views on that video than I did previous um, because this is a brand new thing that I'm putting out and hopefully Facebook um, would think that I would post more videos out there. Has anyone noticed that trend? Like if you post something consistently for a while and then post another media type, you get more reach? Yeah, I don't know. These are just things I'm really conscious of when I, um, when I post. Um, another thing I want to highlight, as we roll this out, you'll see less public content like posts from businesses, brands, and media. So we flat out said that our posts are going to be at the bottom. Um, I expect the time people spend on Facebook and some measures of engagement will go down. So again, what we want out of Facebook, this free marketing tool that we have that's available to us, is people that click on our content, go to our site, and then pursue a certain action. Or they engage with our content, they comment with our content. Um, maybe if you're promoting a show that you do, you want them to go out and physically go to that show and hopefully they learn about that show through your Facebook. Um, but Mark Zuckerberg said it's going to go down, which sucks for all of us. But um, the positive is they want Facebook to be more about personal connections. So how do we as brands kind of compete with this algorithm change? Um, can I ask you yeah. that? The, because, I mean... Facebook itself as a business has changed significantly over the last few years and he's actually sold shares. Mm -hmm. It's gone public. What are the investors saying about that? Um, I think there's going to be a variety of conversation about this. I think the majority of the big change is because of the fake news that's been yeah. happening. So um, if we've been following along over the past year, um, Facebook has gotten into a lot of trouble about um, publishers posting fake news, uh, like those clickbait articles that um, people will click on and then the publishers will get money and they're fake. So um, I think Facebook is trying to remove that persona down. Now, I can't speak exactly to what the investors are, but, are thinking. Well, just to uh, make a point, yeah. the stock has been hit by this change. Mm -hmm. Say it again, sorry. The investors were not happy. Okay, well, I wouldn't think so. No. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. But, but the thing is, when they're reducing places where ads can appear, it also, it's also going to drive the price of the ads up. Yeah, but so far the market has not been receptive to this um, change. No, I mean, you hear news that uh, Unilever is, is threatening to pull out of all social advertising because of this, right? Mm -hmm. I, I spend a lot of your advertising mm -hmm. on Facebook, and um, I, I think they're extremely formulaic. Uh, and so I normally do like broad awareness raising, and then I go in specifically people's feed. I warm them up. Awesome. Stuff. Yeah. But uh, what I noticed is I had the worst impact ever from the broad awareness. But once <laughs> right. I go down to very targeted in the feed, that's uh, that's just as good. Uh, actually, it might even be a little better. Yeah. Well, I think that's part of the change too. Um, for those of us who have already a thriving Facebook page, it's not going to affect us too much. Um, it's mainly for the wide audience, the ones that don't know about our brands, that will get affected. Now, you have a, like a cold audience, which is that wide audience, and then the warm one that you that already have engaged with you. So because they've engaged with you, um, it could just be clicking on your content that uh, Facebook has yeah. Yeah. Well, it's not engaging, but it's more going into their feed, like targeting extremely specifically okay. versus sort of a broad awareness. And I have it. It's basically the setup to whether you let uh, Facebook decide or are right. I say I overrule your judgment, do exactly what I tell you. Yeah. And then I get very high conversions, yeah. but somehow their algorithm has become crappy and I consider it sort of a waste of money. Right. Uh, so um, do you? So you notice a big change though with your Facebook ads uh, this year versus last? Uh, I think so in the awareness, but not when I go hyper-targeted. Right, so. yeah. 
Um, just a rule of thumb, it, thumb, the more hyper-targeted that you can get, the better with Facebook, but I know it is hard, especially if you're new and um, it's a brand new page, to really get that, but um, yeah, the more consistent you are with it, the better it will be over time. When you mean hyper-targeted, you mean very niche? Yeah, niche okay. audience. When you're advertising? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, when you're advertising. Um, I'll share some, some of the successes I've had on Facebook ads through my, my targeting, but the more that you can uh, target people who have been on your website and have shown an interest, the better the results will be in my experience. Yeah. Well, here's a wild card here. Facebook's criticized for creating bubbles. For creating bubbles? Like bubbles. Like for instance, oh. if, you, if you lean a certain way politically, yeah. you're oh, most right. likely to see. So if these change, you know, you're, what, are these changes actually going to... You know, ex you know, expand the bubble, or just make people's bubbles even, you know, yeah, smaller. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, I, I was reading somewhere. Is anyone familiar with Reddit? Yeah. So Reddit has um, an upvote and a downvote option, and Facebook is going to test out a like a downvote feature, so a dislike function, which I think would be really good in some sense, but also really bad. It can get really dangerous. Um, but the idea is when you dislike or download a post, it will help customize that algorithm to let uh, the newsfeed know what posts make sense for you to see, right? I think it's just for groups at the moment. For groups, okay, that's good to know. Yeah, I, th I, I know they haven't rolled it out in, in Canada yet, but yeah, anyways. Isn't that what the angry emoticon is supposed to be? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but I think it's more of a subtle way <laughs> of doing it. Yeah, I, but I yeah. don't think those emoticons distinguish. I no, but they all just mean like in terms of interaction. Okay. Just like, I thought that's what yeah. they, they might use that for, like ads that would appear if you have too many angries. Then. Right. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's a really big part of it too. Um, but it, with the dislike function, I think because it will be right beside the like button, it's more accessible, it's more easy to see. Yeah. <coughs> Okay, so with more meaningful social action, social interactions, this is what I think Facebook means. Um, oh, I see that it's locked off. But anyways, the image to your left is Facebook when it started out 2004. So it's very friendly. You use it as a platform to connect with friends and family. Um, not a lot of advertising yet, but nowadays we feel like that lonely shopper who is being consistently targeted by ads, um, and it's less of a genuine experience, um, which is why you see a lot of people moving away from Facebook. Now, I don't think Facebook is going to die anytime soon. There's still loads of people that are on it, but I think because a lot of people are moving to platforms where it's more social, like Snapchat, um, as well as you know, Instagram moments and stuff like that, um, that Facebook wants to change the algorithm to adjust to that shift. Yeah. So the, the changes is previously, their goal was to show users relevant content, but now the goal is to show content that sparks conversation and meaningful interactions between people. Um, now, if you think this just affects your business page, it also affects your personal page. So just keep that in mind. Um, the changes also favor longer comments on posts. So instead of um, having a post and just commenting back, you know, something generic like, oh, this is awesome, or I like this, or I agree, they are favoring longer comments that spark a conversation um, between the users themselves versus uh, you targeting the users. So uh, there's less emphasis on likes and clicks, so they're favoring comments, but meaningful comments. Um, and they're essentially they're converting users from a passive experience, you know, being targeted ads, to more of an active experience where they're engaging with content and engaging with e with each other. That's a big part of it. So the changes that I've personally seen were lower reach. I think that's standard. Everybody is seeing that. Um, less video views. So my view my videos aren't getting as much views as they did in the past. Uh, less clicks. And I'm putting in more money into advertising to meet the demands of last year. But does this mean that in the future that we're going to receive less fake news and mismatched content? I think this is why Facebook is really um, adamant on this change, is to get out of this fake news um, territory. So from spending more, um, more of my money on Facebook ads, does that mean that the organic post is completely dead? I say. 
it's a little bit of both. If your page doesn't have a lot of engagement already, you're definitely, this is going to hit you hard. But if you are seeing a lot of engagement already, then it's not gonna affect you as much. And by engagement, I mean likes and comments and clicks on posts. So here are some of my um, optimization tips that I've tried out on my campaigns. Number one is have a comment strategy. Okay, so again, we're favoring comments that spark interaction between each other. So instead of having a post that is targeted for a user to view passively, the idea is the, the post will encourage conversation between each other. Um, we want to avoid generic comments like awesome or me too. We want to start having um, more comments that spark a, a conversation or interaction. A great way is to genuinely ask a question at the end that will encourage people to, to comment back on it. And um, is anyone familiar with those um, posts that that could be used that are, um, oh, tag a friend if you agree, or um, like this if you agree? <coughs> yeah, Facebook is smart. <laughs> they know about that. They, that's not going to help you anymore. Um, but this, I know, is going to be really harsh on companies that are doing contests and that have that, um, that that campaign going on. So they have to be more creative in the ways to um, get users to comment and interact with each other. So bring in a comment squad. <clears throat> this can be your employees, it could be your, your brand ambassadors, but bring in people that you know have engaged with your content um, and are a part of your company or brand and get them to comment with each post. Um, for one of the clients that I, that I have, I personally put out a Google Calendar each time that a post goes out so the employees know to uh, log in and comment on that post. Um, this is especially great if you are a brand new company and you don't have a lot of followers or engagement already. This will get the exposure up. And then once the exposure is up, then you don't have to worry about that comment squad. They can do their other work instead of <laughs> interacting with their social media. Tip number two, Facebook groups. Is anyone part of a Facebook group? Yeah? Anyone have a Facebook group? Awesome. Cool, so I think Facebook groups are the way to go. Um, again, we want to encourage members to speak with each other. That's the purpose of a Facebook group. Um, one thing that I've tried out that, that's helped a lot is when I create events and I invite members to that event, they could be in-person or online events. Um, if I do a Facebook Live, I'll create an event for it. And with the beauty of a Facebook group is you can invite all of your members to attend that event. So it appears on their calendar, and every time you are invited to an event, um, a notification pops up. So you just get more exposure that way. Um, and then secondly, you can introduce members to each other by tagging them in the comment section of your post and encourage the conversation that way. So you, the big idea is to get them to talk to each other instead of you talking at them. So here's an example. Um, I just posted, what are you working on today? And um, one of my members just asked, or just said, she's updating her site, and she needs a new logo. So I tagged a member of the group that is a graphic designer. And then it's up to them to carry the conversation, and hopefully it will be through this post. Yeah? Aren't there limitations on the people that you can tag depending on their privacy settings? It does depend on their privacy settings, yeah. So they have to be on a public privacy setting, yeah. Um, this is easier to manage. I don't have a huge following to my group. It's very selective, so I only have to manage like 50 to 100 users. So I actually have an Excel spreadsheet with each one, and I say what they do. So just so I know in the future, if I want to connect them to each other, then um, I have that resource, right? And everyone you add to the group, just add them onto that list. It's an extra st step, but it really does help you connect people to each other. But have, haven't they recently changed the settings on the groups as well? For adding people? Uh, no, for the I, I got a message on Facebook that they were changing the settings. For instance, they had automatically set all my groups to highlights only. And if I wanted to see everything the group was saying, I had to change it to all. Yeah, so you would be... Uh, I think what you're talking about is... It's similar to pages, but... 
it's kind of like the see first option, um, but in groups, um, instead of having all of the content show to all the users, it, it is selective as well with the Facebook um, algorithm, which is why I think tagging is really effective. Okay. Yeah. Because then that way they will for sure get that notification. Mm. Tip number three, Facebook Live is your friend. Uh, there's a ton of content out there, especially in this conference, about um, Facebook Live and live streaming videos. It's really hot right now. Um, so my tips with create Facebook Live is to create different lengths of videos. So I tend to do a weekly um, long form content piece. This could be a Q&A. Maybe I'm um, interviewing somebody or it's a tutorial or a product review or a story or something like that that is up to 20 minutes. It's a longer form and you can dictate how long it's going to be. Um, but before that goes out, a week prior, you can promote that um, Facebook Live event, that longer form piece, with a mini um, one minute clip uh, of promoting it, right? So um, the beauty with Facebook Live is everybody that follows you gets a notification that you've gone live. Um, so it just gives you more exposure. And uh, what I do with those one minute tips, since I've created an event for my 20 minute Q&A, um, at the bottom of the event in the comment section, or at the bottom of my one minute tip at the bottom section, I also uh, put in the event, so it just links everything together. Um, you can also look into AODA, is anyone familiar with that? It's, yeah, it's the Accessibility uh, Ontario, Accessibility Ontario Disabilities Act, I think? Um, but it's all about captioning. Um, and making design inclusive. So by 2025, all um, Ontario uh, companies, they have to be AODA compliant, um, which means that all videos have to be transcribed and captioned. Yeah. But Facebook has a caption option on it, right? So it's a captioning for you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So Facebook um, makes it easy for you. Uh, there's a transcribe option, and if you go into your video <laughs> and edit it, um, you'll be able to see that there's a captioning option and it actually does it for you. Um, I always recommend you to go through it and you can edit what the captions say, but um, instead of hiring somebody to do it, you, it's the majority of it is done through Facebook, which is great. <coughs> so here's an example of what this would look like. Um, the captions would be at the bottom there. Plus some a lot of people will go on their Facebook, maybe at work, and they don't want to have the sounds on, so they want to view videos, and captions are, are great for that. Now, I don't know how accurate this is, but I also believe that captions help with your SEO, just because it's text and it's on there. So. Um, tip number four, see content first. So encourage your followers to switch their um, following settings to see your content first. That way, it will always show up on their news feed. Um, this approach, you do want to play around with it. It can seem a little aggressive if you keep bombarding people with it, but I think there's a way to do it tastefully without seeming very aggressive about it. Any questions so far? Yeah? I was going to say, just to add to the captioning, uh, number one, consider the fact your audience may not uh, be deaf. And the other thing to consider, too, is um, your audience may speak English as a second language, right. and they'll benefit from reading the captions. Absolutely, yeah. It's, it's all about making media, any form of media, accessible to everyone. So it is definitely beneficial in all accounts. Do you know if uh, Facebook, like YouTube, will search through the captions in order to actually like display that content that people are searching for? I'm not sure. I think they, I think they will probably get to get there if they haven't already. Mm -hmm. Well, that's my assumption, yeah. Which is why I think it will help boost your SEO that way too. Right. Yeah. Any other questions so far? Okay, tip number five. So, as much as we can promote our posts organically, at the end of the day, Facebook is a free marketing tool, and which marketing tools out there are free nowadays? Um, I think <laughs> Facebook does really want you to pay to get more exposure, so um, Facebook ads are the way to go. Um, and having a strategy is, is beneficial for you and um, you know, really segmenting your audience. Maybe in one campaign you want to target 
um, more of a general audience, so uh, people who don't know about you, who don't know a lot about you. Maybe the other strategy is going to be your warm audience, so people who have engaged with your content before. Maybe they've been on your website, but they may not be your customers yet. And um, the last campaign could be uh, they're called a hot audience, so people who have purchase from you or maybe they have gone to your shopping cart and then dropped off. Or maybe they're ones that interact with your content all the time. So you want to create different campaigns for each one and see which, which is more successful for you, right? So some paid ad campaigns that I've done that I've found were pretty successful. The Facebook Live video you do, the longer content piece, um, so that 20 minute video, I usually put in some money into it to boost it um, within my, my, my page because uh, those people have already shown interest that they're following my page, they have an interest in what I'm doing, um, and I want them to see the post, so I boost that Facebook Live and target my followers. Um, next is with Facebook ads, they have different objectives. So um, common ones are increase reach, increase website clicks. Try the drive engagement objective because Facebook um, will target users who typically comment on posts. And by doing that, hopefully they'll engage and comment on your posts. So really, yeah, try out that objective. I found that it um, really helped boost my engagement. And uh, one that I find to be really good and effective is the messenger feature. So at the bottom of an ad, um, the button, the call to action would be um, learn more, let's say, and it will pop up a Facebook messenger window so you can contact the person or that person can contact you in a one-on-one -on -one Facebook message. Um, this is a great technique for users who have shown already an interest in your, in your company. Um, that way, if they want to learn more, you can have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with them. Um, if you are savvy, you can also connect a chatbot to it. So every time they message you, um, there will be an automated response and they'll have different selections of the options to choose and that will generate another um, comment. But for me, I, I've only done this for um, a client who had around, they had around a 10,000 10, following. And, um, we got a decent amount of message, messages that I was able to manage it, so I didn't need a chatbot in that instance. And the more personal you can be, the better. So here's a case study. Um, I teach CE at Humber, and my class, uh, there was an error on the website about my class, and um, when users went in, it said that they needed a prerequisite, but in reality, they didn't. Um, so by the time we were able to get that completely changed, it took a while and I only had one week to promote my class and we needed a minimum amount of numbers of, to get to let the class run. So I ran a Facebook ad for them. Uh, the objective was to fill in a class, a class cost $380. Um, I only had a week and a really limited budget. So here's an example of that um, learn more campaign where you click on to a bot uh, or the one-on-one -on -one messenger. So if somebody clicks on learn more, it will go into their messenger and they can contact the company right away through that. So the results were really good. Um, my tactic was to retarget my website viewers. Um, on the website there were uh, different pages. One was for the social media certificate, so I put in more money for uh, people who have been on that page specifically, but it also targeted people who have been on the Humber uh, website as well. So the result was I got 47 messages. Now these messages, some of them were going to be useful, some of them were not. Uh, some of them were, hey I'm interested in photography, can you lead me to the right person? Which is great for Humber because it just got them more exposure and they had that one-on-one um, -on -one experience where they talked to a real human to guide them to a program that they liked. Um, and the result, I actually enrolled four people, which was amazing because my class ran and now I'm teaching. Uh, so my cost per action, so the cost for each enrollment that I received was $38 per student, which is pretty good considering the class costs $380. So yeah, they really benefited from that. How fast did you respond? Did you like 
like throw a huge amount of money and do it in a giant burst, or was it always uh, so, back later in the evening? Yeah, for that, because I was freaking out. I really wanted to fill this class. I was on Facebook 24-7. <laughs> <laughs> like, I always had it on. Um, I had my phone on me. It would notify me every time somebody messaged me, and I would make sure to respond right away. Um, so, yeah, and there was, an, uh, there was a team as well. So at night, you know, if somebody happens to be up at 3 in the morning, then they would respond back. Oh, yeah. sweet. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I have for you. Um, here's my info if you want to contact me if you have any specific questions I'd love to help. But if there are any questions now, yeah, I can take them. Yes. In terms of the in terms of agreement with Facebook, in terms of uh, forcing people to say, hey, like my page and stuff, yeah. which Facebook does not like, have you ever tried or do you know anything about just saying it in a video or a Facebook Live and say, hey, come like our page? Like, do you find anything happening with the algorithm with that? I don't think there's anything wrong with saying it in a video, but yeah, if, it, if you put it out in a text <coughs> form, then it's not good. <laughs> yeah, Facebook goes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you ever get any response from people that they felt it was strange to give a to you to message directly? Or was it like always positive? It was always pretty positive. I found that because they didn't get a generic automated response, they appreciated it more that they, talk, they were talking to a human. Um, I mean, customer service 101, you go and you introduce yourself uh, so they know that they're talking to a human versus the Facebook robot. Yeah. Do you have a, like a framework with your clients for how you produce and test creative? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So you can, tell, you can have so many different um, ad sets and different objectives mm -hmm. that you can use to test out how effective a campaign is. Um, typically for an ad campaign, especially if you have a bigger budget, I have around 20 ad objectives to test out. Right. Um, so each creative you might test out the font color or the, the graphic that you use, but making little subtle changes to see which performs best, but comparing it with the same audience. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I typically test out the font colors, um, the call to action, and then the image. Yeah. Um. Do you have like any number where you pull it? Because the problem is uh, Facebook picks a winner early on, and I used to think it was 500. Once in my life, mm -hmm. I'd actually got on the phone with someone who worked in the ad department of Facebook, which is like unheard of. To yeah. actually speak to a human there, I, and so yeah, I asked her. Yeah, it is. How's she going to touch with <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I, I do struggle, uh, but but she said, yeah, it was somewhere around 500. That was like maybe a year and a half ago. I don't mm -hmm. know if you have like a number you go for or where you call it before you get the bias. I think it depends on how big of a following you have, but my cutoff point in the, is a thousand, so a thousand views, and then I make a decision. Okay. Um, but sometimes what I do is so with Facebook, if you have 20 different ad sets, it will pick a winner and just put in money for that winner. Um, I also split it out sometimes into different campaigns. So one campaign could just be testing the image, the other campaign would be just testing, um, say, the font color, the next one will be like different audiences. So, yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Well, I'm doing a lot of uh, the analysis you do is through the Facebook's tool itself, but do you use any other tools outside of Facebook to do sort of assessment of your impact? Um, so I find Facebook uh, Business Manager is really helpful, um, especially their audience tool. Um, so you do have to switch to Business Manager to get all the, this feature. Um, but yeah, I mean, even just general research, um, especially on audience, if you look up PRISM5, P-R-I-Z-M-5, um, you can find a detailed uh, demographic and psychographic report on your audience based on uh, their postal code. So this is only open to Canadians, um, but if you have a physical location or physical shop, you can put in that um, that postal code and it will give you a whole bunch of information about who lives in that area, um, and that really helps for targeting ads. Yeah. What's, what's the name? Prism 5. Let me write that down if there's... It's from Amber Onyx. Yeah. Yeah, 
just want to work that so okay. There we go. Any other questions? No, I'll ask the self-interest thing. Uh, so I'm a YouTuber, right? I yeah. make a lot of videos there, and I've been trying to like funnel at least some of my audience, not funnel all of, like everyone over, but just so I don't have to rely on YouTube all the time, yeah. right? And I'm just wondering, I, I've spoken with other people, and they said that by transferring some of their content over, it just saps away like uh, users from YouTube, right? How do you, have you had to work with kind of somebody who might have like a video business on the side and wants to do maybe something like Facebook native and how did you go about kind of structuring like the content for that? Yeah, I think it's always dif difficult uh, transferring users from one platform to the next. First, they may not even be on that platform, but I find that if you post exclusive content, so maybe your big push is Facebook Live for um, some sort of content that you do, and then you do a little promo on YouTube to, to promote that, I think that's the best way to, to transfer people over, but I do find it's a really it's a really difficult thing to do. Yeah, um, the best way to do that is, um, I know it's kind of old school, but I really like it, is encourage people to sign up with you through an email newsletter. Um, or just give them, <laughs> let them have access to your email address so you can contact them. Right. And it's more of a direct way. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. I'm having just trouble in terms of understanding the, uh, when you have an established Facebook page, and there's a popularity with the Facebook groups, and there's so much engagement, yet the algorithm has changed so that we can you, you, I want people to stay on the Facebook page. So I'm just wondering how you, you mentioned that you like Facebook groups now. So how do you handle when you have an established site or page that has X amount of followers? Yeah, I think it depends for you what that Facebook group will entail. For me, the group is more selective. So it's people who have really invested in, in me and my company, um, whereas my Facebook page is a little bit more promotional. Um, so I will be sharing tips and social media things on my Facebook page, but more so in the groups. And it's more custom to the members in the group. Um, so in your scenario, do you have a podcast or? It's for, yeah. it's a, for a brand, it's a brand page. Okay, so it's a brand page. Yeah. Um, I, d I don't think you necessarily have to transfer into Facebook groups unless it makes sense. Um, like if you have a dedicated group of people that you want in a group, then it might make sense. But um, for for brands, it you don't have to do groups. Um, it helps more for like personal brands. Um, if you're a personal trainer, you might have your Facebook page as a promotion to yourself, whereas the Facebook group is for your members. Yeah. Just so one added in, in terms, you mentioned this, the strategy of the comment. Comment army. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering, have, have you ever seen anything where you had influencers, where you paid influencers who have a large audience to kind of comment for you, so it's shared on their networks? Have you seen anything like that? Um, yeah, influencer marketing is a whole other session. Yeah, but have you seen it in terms of not in terms of like Instagram or anything, but just in commenting on Facebook pages as a strategy? Because I haven't seen that, so I'm just curious. Okay. If you've seen um, I've, so I've seen companies. So with influencer marketing, um, influencers can go to an agency and then they can uh, negotiate what the terms are. So I have seen that part of a co commenting can be part of their terms. So you could pay an influencer to essentially comment on on your post. Perfect. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Oh. Well, any last questions? Great. Well, I'll be here if you want to talk one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but thanks for coming out. <laughs>